Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. I've got another interview for you today and I'm very excited. As you know, I've had many guests on here and companies that I absolutely adore and I've been so grateful for their time. Today is very special because this company, I actually use their product at every show I do and I have done for several years, maybe six years now even or even longer. So I use this all the time. I'm an incredibly big fan and the person I'm talking to is very talented and very knowledgeable. So please join us in the chat with your questions. I'll try to um, address them as we go. I'll definitely take some questions towards the end as well. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. I really would appreciate it. But without any further ado, let's bring on the one and only Tom Lang from TC Helicon. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing well, thanks, Aaron. Thank you for inviting me. No, I can't say again, thank you so much for joining us. We've got some friends here already. Um, I'll come and say hi to them in a second. But first of all, um, let's talk about you. Before we talk about the company, Can you? we've all seen you on the YouTube videos and you're very talented and you obviously do similar kind of thing to what I do, the, the one man band thing, right? So yep. where, where are you from originally and what first got you into music? And then in the early days, what kind of shows were you performing at? Um, I'm a Canadian, uh, born and raised in BC, had a couple of interesting sojourns to, uh, lived in Italy for a while, lived in Texas for a while, um, just long enough to get a bit of an accent. Um, my first gig, oh my gosh, um, probably, yeah, my first, my first gig was at hi high school in Texas. And I was playing an Electrocomp modular synthesizer and my Les Paul into my twin. And the ground was different. So every time I'd go to sing, I'd get this gigantic shock and the lights would flash. If you've ever had that, this was pre-ground days. So, uh, yeah, that was my first gig. And then I went from there to, came up to Canada, found a band. We played Yes and Carpenters in the same set. And um, played for dances and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, just sort of moved along that way. Played a Strat all my life and a Les, and Les Pauls for a while. And just kept doing it. Later, like recently, uh, talking 20, last 20 years, 10, 20 years, I uh, went to acoustic, did an acoustic duo. And now I'm doing acoustic solo with all the, with all the tricks, but kept down to a dull roar. Like when, when I when I come in with a loop, you know, I don't do the whole sort of shake or mm. listen to it. One chord, listen to it. I don't do that kind of thing. I, I just record a little early and, a, you know, the first part of the song while I'm singing. And then I'll just, when I want to take a solo, the loop comes in, you know, that kind of stuff. Anyway, that's that's a synopsis. <laughs> that actually, I just I just read on your social media you were good enough to post about this interview, and it says on there that you're interviewing me. What? <laughs> so, Aaron, Aaron, um, so give me a question. <laughs> Where did you get started? Where was your first gig? Ah, very good. So I began on piano. Around 14, I joined a band, or around that age, I joined a band, formed a band in my hometown. Yeah. And I... I, I was playing bass at the time and I can't, I still can't play bass now, but I was playing bass and we said, who's going to sing? So I said, well, I'll sing. So I just kind of had to learn how to sing. And, yeah. and I, we did some band gigs and it was great. I loved it. I loved the whole thing of playing in the band. But I soon realized when I switched to rhythm guitar that I could play guitar and sing and some keyboard as well and play yeah. in pubs solo. So I really believed in plugging the guitar straight in and just singing. I remember I did use some tracks occasionally, but whenever I played acoustic guitar, I was a big believer in you plug in and you just play the gig. Now in England, the gigs are kind of... No tricks. No tricks. As we, yeah, that's, that's, that's one way of putting it. But in England, the, the shows were short, like 245s, very short gigs. Ooh, and I did that for years. I did that through college. I did it professionally in the 20s. Yeah. I, I moved to New York. I went right back into, it, back into it again. I was still plugging straight in. I dabbled in a few pedals here and there. But around 2013, I got the white, the, the, the guitar, what was that called? The white version? GTX. Of the, yeah, that, that one. And I, like I, GTX. and I kind of played it and I was like, yeah, okay, I don't know. Then I got to play acoustic very shortly after. And I was too nervous to use loops and harmonies. I thought people would laugh at me. 
I thought people would sit in the crowd and say, aha, he's got, where are those voices coming from? He's cheating, yeah. right? But so I gradually put it in, gradually, gradually, gradually. And before I knew it, I was looping and using harmonies on every song. <laughs> and people were saying they loved it. And, and, I, and I loved it. And that gave me a new kind of, a new uh, fun in the music. And also the shows here can be up to four hours long, at least three hours long. So it's very important here to have loops and things because you literally need just to, like when I don't use the looper now, I get tired because I'm not, I, I, have, to do, I have to keep just playing all the time. Yeah. So, so that's why I want to just, just explain that. And I find it interesting to talk about how people got into the solo thing. Because here's what I think. I think the solo market is small. When I go to Nam, it's all electric guitars, amps, moldy effects, all electric guitars. Loud things, because that's at Nam, you need volume. <laughs> which, which I love too. And I, I started going to Nam after, after, after you guys um, stopped going there. So I never got to meet you. But oh. I, I just, apart from a few companies that do what you do, but not as well, in my opinion, no one caters to people like me and you, and also I'm sure the people in the chat. And that's why I'm so excited to talk today. And that's why I asked you how you got into it, because I find it interesting how people get into the solo show thing and whether they use the effects and the tools available. I mean, now we've got loopers on our phone, like Quantaloop, it's really advanced, and you can do shows with those things. So I'm, I'm interested to see, you know, especially with people performing on Facebook Live, some people don't use the effects on those things, and sometimes that's nice. But I just wanted to know how you got into it and how you kind of started to think. Now, before you worked for the company, I guess you didn't use loopers and harmony pedals, right? They didn't even have them back then. Right. This was, we're talking back when dinosaurs roamed the earth, basically. <laughs> um, before working at TC Helicon, I worked at a company called IVL Technologies, okay. which made the very first focal harmony processor called the VHM5. Mm -hmm. And it was a thing that didn't, this is pre-guitar control. It, it either had MIDI or it had key and scale. So your song had to fit into a key and scale, like C major, and you had to sing the right melody and play the right chords. And then the harmonies would come out and they would magic. Oh my God. First time I heard it, it was like, ah, oh. mm -hmm. um, so from so from that, um, you know, that company was in Victoria, where, which is where we live, hmm. and um, TC Helicon grew was spawned from that company in the same building, hmm. and I was asked to come over to TC Helicon because at that time, IVL as it was known uh, was really focusing heavy on karaoke, and while. I can do karaoke. My heart lies with MI, which we is what we call in the trade, the musical instrument industry. Hmm. And um, so anyway, yeah, yeah. And then we did TC Helicon. And then I was always, you know, helping with product development and stuff like that, as I am today. Um, I was playing in a duo. We were a duo called the Acousticats. And I was playing with this wonderful woman, had this incredible voice, you know, pretty good guitar player. And uh, we had harmony. So I'd be going like, ah, ha, and she'd be going, singing her thing. And we'd sound like gigantic. Mm. And I had a drum machine. Mm. And the drum machine, like we had subs. We, we sounded huge. You couldn't have a drink and listen to the Acoustic Cats. It's like, mm. you know, mm. we were the focus and meant to be. So, And from that point, I went, I can do this solo. Because when loopers started to come out, yeah. and I got pretty good with them, and when we started putting loopers in our products, I went, dude, I show up with an acoustic guitar, uh, voice live touch, and a Bose stick, mm. and I can kill it. Yeah. And um, and a drum machine. And and that's what I do now. And for one guy, it's a pretty big sound. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I really welcome all the people here that are solo performers i hope there are i hope there are some guys out here that and girls that do solo shtick because it's hard oh. good on you you know you've got to you're the focus of attention for two three hours you got to play the whole time and you got to get out of your maybe out of your comfort zone a little bit like for me but, hey how's everybody doing anybody from san francisco tonight you know <laughs> that's so not me and so I've had to come out of my shell a little bit like, hi, you know, just talk to people and stuff like that. And then you find, you know, this this wonderful rapport. And some of those nights you go home thinking, God, I touched people and they touched me. It was fantastic. 
Yeah, I forgot to say, I was in duos too. I went from band down to duos. Right. And I, I, I worked with some great players. I had a, some Australian players that were in like shredding and singing harmonies. So I didn't really need those other things. We had a big sound, like you say. Right. But then once, once they move away or go on tour, then you're thinking, well, now I'll go solo. And also, let's face it, the money is a factor as well. The more people, the, more, the less money involved. So if you're doing this as a career, it's great to, if you, if you play guitar and sing and can use these products to help you out, and it's great because there was a time agents, agencies would say you, you have to use backing tracks for, for a period of time in London. <laughs> they insisted yeah. on it. But when I moved yeah. here, I noticed people don't want that. And I love the way we can create the loops and things ourselves and be organic. Let's just go to the chat and say hi to our friends here because we've got a good crowd here already. We've got Yay. Chris Decker from Brooklyn, who is another uh, big fan of yours. And he's, he's, he's great with the looping because when I go to see him play, he will be looping while he's playing and singing. So he'll go straight into a solo. I think you were mentioning that earlier. That's how I do it. Yeah. 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 There you go. And hi from... That's Chris, is it? Chris Decker. He's in Brooklyn. Um, hey, we've got Chris. Quebec here. We've got uh, Mark uh, Mark Bell's in Ottawa. We've got lots of friends from Canada today. Mark Bell. He's also a Voice Live 3 Extreme user. Um, Ricky from Lebanon, PA. Uh, Fled Isma. Hi, Aaron from New York. Hey, another, another New Yorker. Yeah. Um, great. Great to see you from New Jersey. Yep, thank you too, Frankel. Um, <laughs> our friend Pooh Ninja is here. That's right, Pooh Ninja. I'll put him on the screen there. Uh, Moonbase Alpha Presence. We've got, we got, uh, <laughs> we got people from the galaxy as well. Yes, that's, that's, oh, kind, of, that's the kind of show I have here. And Patsy Smith from England. I think England. there's a time difference, but I guess. <laughs> Not on the internet, no. <laughs> he says, looping makes open mics crazy fun, if done well. Because, yes, I remember the first person that showed up with a looper when I used to run open mic nights. And he, he ran in and he said, I've got a loop pedal like Katie Tunstall, and I'm going to loop tonight, Aaron. I was like, okay, great. And it just fell to, it just fell to pieces because he yeah. hadn't practiced with it. He thought oh, he could yeah. just wing it on the stage. And sure, that, I'll, hit the, I'll hit the record and play at exactly the right moment. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. How hard could it be? Yeah, doesn't take much practice, but it does take practice, in my opinion. Oh my gosh, it takes practice. So you, I, it, when when we get further into it, I'll detail uh, how my kooky rig is uh, about how, yeah, yeah, I use loop. I want to so. I want to hear that. I want to hear that. But let me just rewind because you mentioned the company there. One of, one of my questions today was, how did you get the job at TC Helicon, and how did TC Helicon get Helicon get started? So can you just go over that in a bit more detail for me? Yeah, IVL, as I mentioned earlier, was making the vo vocal products, and we were making them uh, over the years. I worked there for 10 years, and this young man came in named Kevin Alexander, who was a bright guy, destined for success, and basically became my boss, which I was quite, quite fine with, smart guy. Um, and then he got sort of headhunted by this company called TC Helicon that was a joint... Uh, effort, joint venture between TC Electronic and IVL Technologies, mm -hmm. hence the name TC Helicon. The company was originally going to be called Helicon, but uh, the owners of TC Electronic, who were putting in big money to buy a portion of this new company called TC Helicon uh, and, and manage it with IVL, they thought, nobody's going to know who Helicon is. If we put TC in front of it, they'll go, oh, it's affiliated with those Danes and it's going to be great stuff. And it worked for a while, but now, unfortunately, it's just confusing because people say, so I've got a TC. And I mm. go, well, that could be one of 100,000 products. It could be a guitar thing. It could be a looper. It could be a vocal processor. So w when people say, uh, you know, TC, I say, is that TCH, TC Helicon or mm. TC Electronic? But anyway, that's how we got started. And then eventually, uh, TC Electronic bought out the rights to TC Helicon, and IVL went back to what they were doing. Right. Um, they got some. They got some stellar technology, um, but they're they're just not a co a co owner in TC Helicon anymore. So did you? That was the very first vocal harmony pedal, and you used it before you worked for the company. Um, with IVL. When I joined years and years and years and years ago, um, it was we made the very first Harmony desktop product. Mm. It was a desktop. Okay. And then when we got into TC Helicon, I, I or 
I was advising with TC Helicon while I was working with IVL. Mm. They were in, they were happening and doing things. And I said, yeah, well, this is great. They were making rack products. And mm. I thought, and I mentioned this to uh, a person who was working there, Fred Spikin, said, yeah, the rack product, great. Doesn't, me a, doesn't do me a darn bit of good. I need a foot, <laughs> foot pedal. And it was like, oh, okay, well, if we take a few p- bits out of this rack park, product, put it in his box, and put some foot switches on it, then is mm. that what you want? And I was like, yeah. Mm. And that was the very first vocal foot pedal called uh, Voice Live. Oh. It was the very first one. If you've, if you've seen it, it's quite tall, has eight foot switches and a, and a little ancient display. Um, and it was key and scale. That was back in the days when you had to, each song, you had to go, oh, this song is generally in G major. So you had to kick all these foot switches to make it into G major. Yeah. Um, and make sure you remembered for the next song that the next song's in B flat or something, which you had to kick in. So anyway, yeah, that's that's where that went. So TC Helicon, what does that name mean? I've always wondered that. Helicon is the mountain of the muses in Greek mythology. Hmm. Um, and TC, I explained, is the is the little prefix that TC Electronic added in order to increase recognition of the TC Helicon, the new company. This original product was, is it kind of black with a bluish kind of screen? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, there's one on, I just found one on eBay. I'm going to um, show it to the viewers right now. Sure. So I want, I want to ask, like, who actually, yeah, they can see it right there. T- TC Helicon Voice Live Vocal Processor 1, excellent condition, perfect screen. So that was the original. Yep. That's really cool. Yeah. So who who created it? I mean, this technology is incredible. Someone just said in the chat, whenever they use their play acoustic, the harmonies blow people away. I can't even tell you how many times people walk up to me at a bar and say, oh, where's the other singer? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know why they do that, because sometimes I... I missed the note when it sounds, you know, it goes off slightly, but it's whenever they say that, it really impresses me. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. So who, is there one person that, I mean, where, where did this come from? It's such a great idea. And how, how did they do it without like ma- massive latency or anything? It's, it's pretty incredible. Is it, do you know the story behind that? I sure do. Um, th- there is, a, there is a touch of latency, but what happens is because you layer your voice first and your your voice comes out with very very low latency extremely low it's it's like your dry it's your dry voice but when you layer something that's a little little late on the top to a certain extent the composite of the two is heard as harmonies and when you're sitting in a audience and somebody up there like you or like me or like our our audience today is singing with the harmony and you're kicking it on and off and you've got it at the right mix. You're not cranking it and you're not burying it. Um, it's stunningly amazing. And, and it still blows me away to uh, mm-hmm. today. And mm-hmm. it, interesting. You should mention that. Like people come up to you and say that, first of all, they're very astute because a lot of people, sorry, I'm pointing my finger. It's just, <laughs> um, I, I feel like a teacher or something. <laughs> okay, class. Um, <laughs> But anyway, like that means they're, they're that means they're listening because most people don't get that it's harmony. Like the average rank and file who are listening, you know, when they're they're talk they're listening to you for a second and they're talking to their friends and they're on their phone. Um, they're hearing the vocals sound fantastic. Mm. They're hearing the chorus of the song. You're singing da na 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 na, and then you kick on the harmony and the chorus just mm. sounds bigger, yeah. better. Yeah. Um, like and they the don't chorus. they don't think it's necessarily hmm is that a third or a fifth they're not thinking mm. that they're thinking wow that's just amazing the next thing I was gonna say is what we call the helicon effect when we're at the Nam show and oh my gosh I miss miss going to the Nam show I have to say that I, I I miss meeting people and their enthusiasm and their excitement and I miss the helicon moment so this is for mm. somebody who's never heard our stuff before. And, you know, you're explaining it to them. They're going, you know, what is this thing? And you go, well, it's a vocal processor, and it does this, and it does harmony and doubling and blah, blah. And they're starting to glaze over. They're starting to like, because NAM is all about overstimulation. So the words that I'm saying is interspersed with this just orchestra of dissonance in the background, drums and guitars and everything. And they're fading out. And then you go, and it sounds like this. 
and you go with a harmony going and they just like and they just they turn to their friend and they go yeah it's amazing that's the helicon moment and we've tried to capture it as much as we can on video it's amazing and a lot of companies now are doing are talking about guitar processors again a lot of them yeah. this year are doing um real-time pitch changing polyphonic pitch is the new thing this year for mm -hmm. for line six and those guys yeah. So I guess, what are you saying? The vocal That's, thing is slightly easier. Doesn't matter if there's a little bit of latency. I mean, do, do you know what the actual latency is on those harmonies? It is harmonies? not easier. It is not easier. It is more difficult because what's the most, what is the thing that you notice the most? Um, a guitar sounding a little weird or a voice sounding a little weird? And a voice always. Because yeah. you, you've been raised with your mom's voice and mm. people's voices, and we can tell in intricate detail if something is wrong with a voice. Mm. And so for us, it's really hard. I mean, the main, the main thing that vocal processing had to get over was this chipmunk thing, mm. right? Because mm. when Eventide came out with the first pitch shifter for harmonies, they said, hey, it does harmonies, but the harmonies sounded like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody was blown away because it was so cool and you could mm -hmm. pitch shift voices. Yeah. But then uh, IVL pioneered via this process called PISOLA, P-S-O-L-A, pitch shift overlap, overlap and add. It's a technology. It's a way of doing a couple of different shifts to a processed voice to make it sound like when I go, ah, uh, ah, uh, it goes, ah, uh, ah, uh, and not ah, uh, ah. Uh. And when I shift my voice yeah. down, down, it doesn't go down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Right? Yeah. But, and the beauty of it is you can take the, 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 the unison voice like blah, 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 and you can play with it and you can make it kind of like this and you can make it go with this technology called Pasilda. Well, this is why I'm a fan and this is why we have so many people here watching today and joining in because we're fans and we're, we're still impressed by that technology now, yes. right? And I want to hear more about the company. I mean... You release so many products and like I'm pretty new to the extreme, but man, there's so many features in that thing that are awesome and ahead of their time. Because yeah. again, you look at the, I, I keep referring to, I'm in the Facebook groups for the Helix and the Kemper and these pedals and I love them as an electric player, wow. but they don't do, there's so many things in the extreme that are so well thought out that those those guys aren't doing. Like you had the step feature, the, the advanced looping, which is still better than what they're doing now. You had backing tracks, automation, all within this little light pedal. So, how did you how did you think of what features to put in? Is this is this mostly your idea? Is there a team there that sit around and think what would we want at our shows? Because that's what I love about you. Like when I talk to say Chris in Brooklyn, we're, we're friends. We on, on the same circuit. So if we're talking and I say, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I had a looper or a, a drum machine built in that does this? Is that kind of how you came to these 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 um? These products, like what can you tell us about the, the the methods behind that? Yeah, exactly. They're driven by performers on our staff. Hmm. Generally, uh, like since the beginning, performers on our staff, and I'm a performer on the staff, and a couple of the guys who are no longer with us uh, were performers, but were essential to the development of these products. So you know when you think. We went from looping, we, we had looping in uh, Voice Live, we, we, we had it in an update in Voice Live 2, and then we put it in Voice Live 3, and then we put we said, hey, let's add some more memory so we can have more looping time, and then, you know, like most people say, I don't need looping more than three minutes, because my songs aren't that long. So then we had all this extra memory, and then we thought, well, why don't we play tracks from that? Because then you could have backing tracks with your guitar sound, which is processed, you can have like guitar amps that sound like that and effects and vocal sounds and looping and backing track, you know, so we have these sessions where our heads just like, and then we have to really restrain them. So what you see in Voice Life 3 Extreme is actually uh, an encapsulated, like a minimized amount of stuff that came out of our brains. Mm. Yeah, I love it. Because like I said at the beginning of the video, you think like we do. Chris Decker just yeah. said we talk about this stuff a lot. Yeah, we do. We've often said like, and I'm sure again, the people in the chat are fans and users and they want to communicate this stuff as well. There's a lot of Facebook groups now and I've, I invited them to watch us today. 
let me let me get straight to the question that everyone's waiting for me to ask. So you released a lot of products, you've had a lot of updates, a lot of videos. Lately, there's been kind of less stuff. So can we talk about where the company's at now and, and if we can expect any more firmware? I think there was a there was a post a few months ago about there might be firmware coming for the Voice Live Three possibly, and there's there, everyone knows that there's a there's a post now on the official forum asking for ideas for the Voice Live Four and that kind of stuff. So can you give us like some insight into that, please? Um, yeah, I can. As much as you're uh, allowed to, of course. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, we have products coming out over the next months. We're going to have an, a, per, <laughs> this is something that's going to be very interesting for you and I in uh, middle of June, perhaps. Hmm. So be watching for that. That's going to be something for us acoustic guys. Oh. So there's that. Um, so we do have products coming out. We've got more pedals coming out. We've got uh, this and that and the other things. So, yes, there was a dry period, and um, I can't really go into why it was dry. These things, these things kind of happen, you know, staffing changes, all that kind of sort of stuff. Um, but suffice to say that now we, we're going to release all those products that should have come out two years ago, a year ago. Oh. Um, so this year. So this is going to be an exciting and fun year. And yes, we are uh, teasing out ideas for Voice Live 4 because, hey, let's say it. There's this word, Voice Live 4. We <laughs> said it. And we know people want it. And we love to hear what you want because if I build it exactly the way I want it, that's great. That's great for me. But I want, we want to make it so that guys like you, Aaron, or Chris, or whoever else on the call can say, yeah, but if you just nudge this feature this way, mm. then it'll be more applicable to my situation. And then, and then we can do that. And then when we put out this thing that may or may not be fairly expensive, because as you know, Voice Live 3 Extreme is not an inexpensive product. Mm. You know, you've got to really commit to vocal, guitar looping backing tracks and just say yes i want this all in one thing in order to commit to a product that's going to be maybe that or more um you know it's got to have all the features that you're excited about yeah well again i just got the extreme i actually had one before and i was it, i was too it was too soon for me i was just overwhelmed and i love the simplicity of the play acoustic that's i, I love the simplicity but i also want i started to want more and the Voice Live 3 does so much that it's definitely worth it because, you know, it's, it's going to do your electric, your acoustic, your vocals. It's a mixer. I love the way it can record the show. That's invaluable. It's, all this stuff is so... But there's things now like... Like I, I talk a lot about pickups on here. There's things now like impulse response technology, which is a huge mm -hmm. thing right now. I mean, is that something that you're looking into? We would be foolish not to be looking into that. Yeah, yeah. I would love um, to see that. Yeah. We had just before... Just for everybody on the call, just before we uh, went live, Aaron and I were discussing pickups, and I have um, concrete op opinions about pickups mm. because in this last year, my life has been changed mm. as an acoustic player. Quickly, I have a lovely Larave, a beautiful Larave acoustic that I was using live that had an under saddle. And but it came with this undersaddle by B band, which wasn't doing my wasn't doing what I wanted. The strings were all out of balance, wasn't loud enough, blah blah blah. But it had a hole cut in this lovely piece of rosewood and a pickup preamp in there. Mm. So I had to do something. So I bought this lovely LR bags rig, had it all installed professionally. It looks gorgeous, sounds pretty good because it's got a mic and, a, and an undersaddle thing. Is that the mic an and saddle anthem? and a mixer? That's the Anthem? Yes, Anthem Stage Pro. Stage Pro is the uh, preamp that comes yeah. with it. Yeah, I have Tuner that. built in, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And then I went to Long and McQuaid, which is our music store here, and I pulled a Taylor off. I used Taylor off the shelf, uh, 314, which has the ES2 pickup in it. And I played it through uh, a Fender, you know, the Fender with the, the big dynamic speaker, you know, the stereo, fake stereo thing. Um, I played it through that and I went, oh my God, it sounded like an acoustic guitar. It was loud. I could bang on it. Mm. Um, and I've, I've adopted that for my new, um, 
my new solo solo gigging career and it's playing is fun again live like because so, i play fairly loud you know so you prefer that to the anthem sorry bags mm. thank you thank you very much but oh my gosh yes of course hugely we, hugely we we can we can talk about um are you good? sorry my son wants to grab something what do you want Ask him if he can play a song on the roads for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's not live right now. We were talking about you before we went live. He said you play the roads. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. well, maybe you can demonstrate. Trivi, Trivi plays everything <laughs> just like me. But now, now, now the elephant is out of the room with the new products. Let's just talk about pickups for a while because I, I went on this huge journey of pickups and that's why I started this channel to, to really like record them and document them. The Taylor, I haven't demoed yet on my channel. I've done about 16 now. I haven't done that one. I have played it in the past. Um, I know the ES2, not the ES1. The, you got to be sure you got the right one. Yep, and there's been many revisions. Like they've actually changed the preamp um, several times. Um, they, they just changed it again like a year ago to, to remove some okay. low end. And it is, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good, it's a solid system. If you're buying a Taylor, it's a great option. I mean, I play Martin Rain Song. I got the Acoustic Sonic now. I got all those things. So I'm not playing a Taylor, so I can't put it into my guitar. But I know why you like it because it picks up the body sound. It sounds pretty natural. It's all built in, right? Um, the thing about the, the thing about under saddle pickups is it's interesting because we kind of moved away from them to things like the Anthem. I do think the Anthem. I, I love the whole under saddle and the mic thing. I think it sounds good. But we moved into those things with all the, the, the barn doors and things. But the thing about IRs now, I mean, I ha have you seen this? I'll just give this a plug because the guy's a friend of mine, the Tone Dexter. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You've seen that, right? So if you have just a passive under saddle that sounds horrible through the PA and you, and you create a, a wave map with that, it can sound really good. So we've kind of gone full circle in a way. And that's why I was thinking it'd be interesting to see something like that built into the Voice Live products, where I could actually oh, create. That'd be a great idea. There we go. That's what I'm thinking because I Maybe don't. Maybe that's yeah. I don't like carrying this around, and that would include that into one thing. It just seems to make sense to me to have this in the play acoustic or something, combine absolutely, them together. Absolutely. So so anyway, IRs now have made a huge, and people are using them on the the Helix and things too, because you can load in impulse responses. But there's nothing like making the impulse response of your own guitar. It's much better than when you use a third party, I find. But in regards to pickups, yes, that is the heart of our sound, isn't it? With what me and you do on a Friday night in the bar, what, yeah. what's the most important thing, really? I, I would say it's the voice and then the... Well, okay, maybe not the sound of the guitar for the audience. I never had an audience member say to me, that pickup sounds great. But when I have a great sound, I play a thousand times better. That's exactly what I was going to mention. Yeah. I feel so much better playing this. I'm like, I'm having fun here rather than going, oh, I hate this sound. It's so thwacky and so immediate. Um, and the, the, the ES2 or the, uh, yeah, the ES2 pickup is forgiving. Mm. Like humans, we don't have the ability to hit a string twice in the row exactly the same. Yeah. And the undersaddle goes, oh, you are 5% out there. I'm going to broadcast that to your audience. Um, whereas with the, the uh, I don't know how the ES2 works, but it works fine. I, I'm not going to even ask. Um, I feel like, yeah, I can have some fun. I can slap. I can pop. I can, and, and I do a whole thing. I do band in a hand. Everything is uh, bass chord, bass chord. Uh. And I play quite softly. Mm. Um, but it sounds gigantic. Mm. Um, so, you know, with the drum machine and the boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, it, the tailor just makes the sound for me. And it, I, I um, must, I must review that system. And I will say that the, I, I like the 100 series they have the same system. So that's a good option for gigging guitars. They do. Yeah. They actually it's put, affordable. They put the pickup behind, not under the saddle, behind it. So it doesn't affect your unplugged tone. It still gets some body tone, but it is very microphonic. You notice that it picks up every little brush against it, which is great for looping, but you've got to be careful if you're wearing a zipper or something. Yeah, I, I want to review that one, but I have, I have played it. It's a, it's, a, it's, a sol it's a solid system. But I'm thinking... And you can balance strings in pairs. Yes, you can, huge deal. You can adjust With it. Three screws, you know, if your bass yeah. strings are too loud, and that's, that's a huge deal for me. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah. 
And yeah. actually, I do know how it works. What am I talking about? I haven't. I just haven't gigged <laughs> solo for a while because of this COVID. This COVID thing just oh. killed my gigs. Oh, all of us, yeah. That's why I've been. That's why I've been live streaming so much. But yeah. I'm. I'm thinking. I'm always thinking. How do I sound bigger? So I'm now thinking about things like, like you know, I use the metronome out the front of house in the Voice Live Three Extreme as a as a drum. The doof, oh, the kick. Doof, doof, doof. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I would love to see a drum machine in there. I'd love to. Um, I'd love to find. I'd love it if you could find a way that the acoustic guitar could add a bass line. That's you know, like to just just pick out the bottom string and play the bass line like that and sound like a bass guitar and not like a just an octave pedal. I want to sound like a one man band. I just yeah. I, that's that's what that's my ultimate goal. I want to sound yeah. like a band. And any tools you can put in there to do that, that's what I'm looking for. And also, I just feel like you found a great pickup. But anyone that doesn't have a tailor, like like. Again, if they can just have a basic pickup and process it with the pedal, it just seems to make sense to me. I love the fact it's an all-in-one system already, and I just want to see that um, expand. That was just me getting my two cents in there because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for those people that have undersaddled pickups, all hope is not lost because you mentioned play acoustic. If there's anybody on the call who doesn't have our gear, is thinking about getting it, and is you know a solo performer, play acoustic is an affordable way to get into there. And we have what's called body res, which is something that I came up with. Hmm. Very, it's a very simple algorithm, but it just helps an undersaddle sound and feel a little nicer. Hmm. And it it does work pretty good. And, and it, hopefully, when you used when you first used it, Aaron, you weren't turning it off because I was saying I was always saying in the videos, oh yeah, and it's got body res for your undersaddle p- pickup to make it sound better. And you're not going to want to turn that off. It's like tone, right? Adaptive tone on your voice. I See, I'll be honest. I didn't find it did enough for that. And once I got into things like aura and stuff, I couldn't go back. I I mean, I I, 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 I got to be careful. I can just go off on a tangent about this. Uh, For anyone watching, please watch my pickup videos and, and join the chats about those. But I'm so used now to things like dual source. And we had Cole Clark the other day, amazing three pickups in there. I'm used to using, I was using an IR yesterday and just really enjoying it. It's not quite there yet, but it's so, it, it can be really good if it's done right. IRs are good, but they feed back because they put notches at areas where, they put narrow notches where things happen. And yeah. I used an Aura and I was blown away in the store, blown yeah. away at home setting it up. Took it to the gig, I couldn't use it. But the Aura, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's feeding back. And but, the, but the Aura, okay, here's the thing though the Aura is an older pedal now. Aura HD is coming, and I've reviewed that. And that's sounds much better because yeah. what i found with irs is they can sound too kind of processed and wet and it can get kind of lost you, i, I want to see someone create a true blend thing where you could actually get some of that sound but still cut through the mix i think that oh, yeah. that's that's the kind of next generation that i'm looking for for the for the kind of impulse response stuff um yeah i do i do think i i, I do think it's the it's the way forward. I just don't think it's quite done right yet for the performing musicians like us, because on a stage you want to, you want to cut through. Indeed, a lot of performers like us, some people are happy just to use an underseller pickup because it is so immediate and just cuts through. But oh yeah, and, and a lot of, and there are people that like them. I've been reading on the forums about some people like the sound that very immediate uh, heart attack boom in your face kind of sound. And great if you're if it's working for you and you feel good about playing. And your audience isn't running out the door because of your guitar sound, then great. Yeah. But for me, I I I need that 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 feedback that says, hey, you're doing the right thing. It sounds pretty nice. Mm. It's also nice. And I actually have had people in the audience come up and say, I love your guitar sound. It yeah. sounds so acoustic. Mm. Mind you, they're players. Yeah. But that's the compliment that just goes, yes. And then I go on my tirade about. <laughs> It's also nice to get body sound, but that system gives good body sound because then you can loop, right? You can play the drums and things like that. That's very that's But very also fun. you can use, like the way I use, uh, I do uh, uh, diamonds on the soles of her shoes. Mm. And there's this. So I go. Mm. And, you know, it's this whole sort of magic that you're weaving by doing percussion as well. So that's a good point then. Tell us what your if you were doing a gig if if you were doing a gig tonight, what is your rig right now? My rig is uh, Voice Live Touch One, the early one, not Voice Live Touch Two, the early one, uh, because I I for me the looping works best, and I have a drum machine going into that in the auxiliary in, and I have um, 
I obviously use the harmonies, the, the adaptive tone on my lead voice. Um, I don't do anything for the guitar other than a little reverb. But here's the trick, and this is interesting. I hope <laughs> I've got a three button foot switch for looping. The middle foot switch is turning the drums on and off. I've hot wired it myself. It's a, one of our TC Helicon foot switches. The middle starts and stops the drum machine. Great. The one on the left starts and stops recording the loop. The one on the right, no. Yeah, the one on the right stops the loop. The one on the left records the loop. So I hit two at a time. So at the beginning of a song, I can do from the downbeat, I can start the drum machine and start recording. So I can go like Layla, I do. And then I hit the other two at the same time and it's playing back. It stopped the drum machine, but the drums are in the loop. Mm. And so anyway, that, there's that rig and nobody else uses that rig. rig. It's crazy. And it really demands your timing and focus because when you go, it's easy to start the, the, the recording. The drum machine starts and the recording of the loop starts. Going, that's great, fine, no, no problems. But you have to make sure that play and stop are at exactly the right place. Because as everybody who loops knows, you do not want that loop coming around going Nothing worse. That's when I bail out and I have to <laughs> build another one. <laughs> Well, that slight, that slight little gap at the beginning, that little time, oh, yeah. Ah, it's, it makes me nuts. But anyway, so that's that's my looping ring. And then I've got a Bose stick, a uh, Bose compact, mm. uh, which I absolutely adore. Yeah. It, it's got – and my drum machine, which I've programmed all on my own. It's, a, it's an SR18 Alesis. It's all my own programs. Um, you know, it's tasteful. Um and it uh, coming out that bow stick, and I can I can raise or lower mm. where the the tweet is, right? Mm. Um, and it sounds it sounds so good with the with the tailor and the and the whole thing. It's it's quite a great rig, and that's what I would use if I went out tonight. We need a demo of this at some point on your channel. Oh my god, I'd be love to. I'd love to. Mm, that'd be I'd have, that'd be a good episode actually. Um, but I. I'd have to wear a mask because, as you know, I work for TC mm. Helicon, which is Behringer and Turbo Sound and Midas, and ah. so I'd have to be the masked gigger. <laughs> that could be fun. I've been using the Beat Buddy lately, but I find it hard to find a, a rhythm that really sits nicely. You know, they're either too kind of in your face and that does, doesn't seem to fit with acoustic, or they're too mellow, kind of percut. It's very hard to find something I find that really. It works well and that's why i've been using just the kick drum i love that kick drum in the voice live 3 extreme just on yeah. choruses just to add a little lift like the harmonies it lifts it without yeah. being too obvious like hey i've got a drum machine here yeah yeah so it's, it's, it's finding ways to do that you know a lot of companies lately are doing apps like um thu just released an app version of their processor and bias effects 2 just came out as an app and these are really powerful apps problem is you still need a foot pedal to control them so, yeah. Do, but do you but think you get Bluetooth apps or Bluetooth foot switches mm. that can help with that? There's a tiny leg, but you can do that. Yeah, I, I tried one last week uh, from one company, but it just didn't. It wouldn't stay connected. So I think things like that kind of not frustrate people, and they just go back to hardware. But do you yeah. think that the future is apps? I mean, do you see a future where you have an app that just does the vocal stuff, and then someone else does the guitar stuff? Or do you think do you think the future is or is is not going that way? Is it too soon for that? Well, um, we have an app coming out soon for um, it's a free app that's for the Go Solo and Go Twin interfaces, and it has harmony processing in it, mm. and it has some other goodies too. And uh, I won't let go too much of it, but it's it's. It's going to be quite exciting, and, and it's a, a unique and interesting thing. You know, we like to do a unique and interesting, innovative stuff. Um, so anyway, we have that coming out. So yes, the potential is that we were always worried that a phone wasn't going to be powerful enough to run our stuff. Mm. And now we're going, ooh, yeah. they're getting more powerful. Yeah. So uh, we're able to do that. I would love for it all to be 
on an iPad. Like I don't even have to bring my um, Voice Live Touch or my drum machine. I'd love to have it all, all in there. But as we know, if you get too concentrated with your gear, if you get everything into one, all it takes is one problem with that one thing and you're completely down. Mm. Right? So I, I would hope that we put it all, we eventually get it all in an iPad or a, a Samsung pad or whatever. I see potential because I've reviewed some, I mean, the phones now are probably as powerful as some of the, I mean, I imagine the iPhones now are more powerful than the Voice Live 3. Would you say that's true? Voice Live 3 is a different animal. It's got a dedicated audio digital signal mm. processor for which code has been written. Okay. An iPhone is just a, it's an open thing. It's like, oh, you can do anything with me. So mm. it's not quite as dedicated. But, you know, if we talk about MIPS, like millions of instructions per second, mm. We're both in the same boat, and we're we're going to a new platform. But that's all I can say about that, um, as far as like the the digital part, the processing part of it. Mm. Um, you know, we've got to benefit from the economies of scale of phone uh, technology and stuff like that. But we're going to still keep making hardware because right now, like you said, Bluetooth is disconnecting, and yeah. um, maybe you got a Facebook bong right in the middle of your performance mm. you know <laughs> yeah. dun, 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 bing bong well i reviewed a i reviewed the jbl speaker and it had this app which is amazing when it's connected but then on stage i don't really want to go into the app and and do this but at home it's amazing to have that flexibility and power incredible but on stage i just want to throw something on the floor and play the gig i think we will get there but we're not there yet i, I reviewed a bluetooth controller pedal again it didn't work every time had latency there's, there's still obstacles there, but I see it going that way. And I wonder if in, in 10 years it will all be on the iPad and we just buy like the vocals from you and the guitar from someone else and some effects plugins from someone else and a looper from this person and build our own pedal, you know, with no, no compromise. I don't know. It's just that I guess then you wouldn't sell hardware. So that's why a lot of companies are not doing that because you want the hard. Well, the cost of the apps would probably go up, of course, because you have yeah. to support engineers to, to build that stuff yeah. I, it's inevitable that it'll go that way but it's kind of like playing digital drums versus a real kit like i've got a real kit over here and um there's just something about beating the heck out of a real drum kit that you mm. don't get out of a digital kit which sounds probably arguably better mm. and you can turn it down or you can turn it up but I, I think for me, I don't know. I don't know if I, yeah, I probably would want to go with an iPad and just just do that. But as but I like hardware. I like holding something in my hand. I like buying something and giving it to somebody or loaning it or whatever like that. Um, one thing I was going to say about Bluetooth is, so here you are. You're at home. You're testing your Bluetooth. Working fine. Great. Left it on for an hour. No dropouts. Everything's good. You go to the gig yep. and everybody else is using Bluetooth yep. too. Yeah. Yeah, and I've, there's where you're getting your dropouts. I've reviewed a lot of wireless systems because everyone wants to be wireless now. And I live, yeah. I, we're in this apartment in New York City and it, I just get dropouts and I go to a gig and I get noise or dropouts. And unless you buy one of the really expensive ones, the analog mm. ones are, are still better. Like, well, you know, not, not analog, but you know what I mean? Those new digital ones are just not reliable. I'm not willing to take those chances. So mm -hmm. it's cool when it works, but you got to get it right. It's a bit like with your harmonies, right? They work, so it's great. But when it when things don't work, then they're not usable in a gig. So that's that's yeah. the whole thing with that too. But yeah, we're going that way. I'd love to see them work together. I said to Larry Fishman, I'd love if he made like an Aura pickup with no controls, but I could I could tweak it from my phone. So at home, I could apply some reverb and more but or less low end. But then at the yeah. gig, I just play. So like a hybrid kind of system, something like it's that. It's it's your editor, and it's up here rather than you you go yeah. play 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 lean yes. Play, 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 lean, yeah. and at the end of it, you go, oh, my God, my back. Yeah. Um, like, no, that's that's totally doable. That's easy. Yeah, like a, you, like a remote. Are easy. Oh, I know what I need to ask you. So when I, when I did go to NAM, I did stop by um, the office there in California. And one year, they had all your, all your guys together, and I spoke to TC Electronic because they made this really interesting pedal, which was the, the looper, which would... Um, keep in time with the drummer. You put the mic on the 
on, you put the mic on the drum and it would keep the loop in time. That's the kind of product that I'm always wanting. Like, give me those products. It's gonna change my life. I can finally do a three piece band, loop over the drummer easily and take a solo. This is the kind of stuff that I, I dream about. <laughs> can I, can I just say something? <laughs> that was designed by us. Yes. That's why before you said no, that, I was about to say that. Helicon designed that for TC Electronic. Right. And to hear you say those words, just like, I I'm, I'm so glad to hear you say that because that's, that's exactly the, why that thing was designed. That's what the guy told me. He said, you designed that tech. So first, what, what do I start thinking? If that was in the Voice Live 3, then I can go to a band gig plug into the PA, loop that drummer, play electric over it. With, you know, if you get new, 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 new electric sounds and stuff, a true all in one. I know it's a big ask, but how, how did you design that? And I will, I just want to put in, um, I had some issues with it and I don't think they ever got resolved, but when that thing worked, it blew my mind. It worked in the rehearsal. On mm -hmm. stage, we had some issues, and I think there were some things that they were looking at improving. The bass player was probably too loud. Uh, the mic under the... Did yeah. you put the mic under the snare? On the snare, yeah. Yeah. The thing is, if the stage volume gets loud, it can get confused. Agreed. Mm -hmm. That product was a great start. Yeah. I'd love to see that. Um, I would love to see that, see that evolve. Is gonna, yeah, it's going to go on. And, I hope so. Uh, and VL4, what a great place to put that. Oh, he says with a smile. <laughs> hey, I'm just pre-ordering from Sweetwater. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> For next year. <laughs> no, no, I want I wanna, you know, I mean, I don't want people to think that I'm just being nice because you're on my on my show right now. What a game changer. Some of some of the people here may not have used that pedal. It was a ditto with a mic in it, and you put the mic on the drum. We did the rehearsal. What a game changer that could be. A bit like the harmonies, and I'll tell you another. Well, maybe explain it even more. Like, yeah, please. Tell please. Them that you make a loop. Yeah. While the drummer plays, yeah. like you press the chord and the drummer's playing. Yeah. And then when you press play on the loop, the drummer sped up a little bit, maybe because he's a human, or 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 down, or he may be speeding up later on. But the loop, the timing of the loop, your guitar part is uh, expanding and contracting, and not sounding like it's expanding and contracting. It just sounds like you're playing along with the drummer who's naturally moving around. Yeah. So yeah, maybe maybe not everybody got that, but yeah, it does work like that. Well, we've all tried looping with a live drummer and we've all had it go horribly wrong. This yeah. product allows the drums, allows the loop to adjust to the drummer's timing. So if they speed yeah. up, the loop speed ups, uh, speeds up. What a great idea. What, imagine how that could change bands. You just put this little pill. I mean, so now we could use in-ears and play the tracks and loop over the track and quantize that loop. But imagine just throwing that mic on the drum and just playing the show and you can loop anytime you want, send it to another uh, amp. And that basically you've got two guitarists at that point. I love that idea. I was so happy to hear you develop that. And I was thinking, oh, how could that come into the, the Voice Live products? Maybe you could do a looper where it kind of keeps in time with the, like if you, if you change time, the loop keeps with you or something. I, I always want looping to become more intelligent and easier because it's a yeah. hard thing to do. More human. And more human, yeah, yeah, and it's a right, hard thing to do. It, it, when you sit down with a human playing side by side, I got a guitar, you got a guitar, mm. we're throwing ideas at each other, we're changing the tempo, changing the feel, changing all that stuff. It's, it's kind of neat to think, it's almost like an AI dream, you know, that we would design an electronic thing that would uh, not only follow you, but maybe throw a couple of curveballs at you. Mm. Like, so you're going, a A A A D D D D A A A A E E E E. You know, it's an oversimplification, but you're playing that thing, and then it picks up that, and then you do a little sort of riff over top of it, and then it goes A A A A C C C C G G G G D D, and you're going, mm. oh, that's cool, that's cool, mm. right? I, I that's that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking way where where it would be really really useful that way. But can I can I give you 20 seconds on? how I use the Ditto Jam, because I play with this 14-piece uh, giant um, Motown R&B horns, uh, six female singers. Uh, you know, we get this giant, giant juggernaut, and it's funk, right? So anybody out there who's played in a played funk guitar in a funk band, you go, leather rinse, repeat, the whole song. There's no change to the funk part, which is great because you're you're bringing the funk. But this looper, 
I brought it to the I brought it to a rehearsal and we're doing like uh boom bum 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 this Michael J. I don't know what's happening, baby. And I went and then I'm looking at the bass player and I went and it's like boom bam bam ba day ba day ba boom bam bam and then you can go and it's it's so perfect for the funk band because I can get away with I could stand there all night. I don't want to, of course. I want yeah. to participate. But in this band, it's killer. And I, and I love, this is almost like the helicon moment I was mentioning earlier where yeah. you, yeah. you're playing and you're looking at somebody else in the band and you go, and your part keeps playing. Yeah, that's it. That's absolutely, that's, that's, that's what I want. And I'm sure that's what all musicians want. Some musicians don't even realize they want that yet. But they, if, you, if, if that could be perfected, then every band would own one of those things. Or multiple yeah. of them, just to yeah. just to play more parts. Should right? we go to some questions? I think yes. you and I here have been pontificating. Yeah, we have a lot of questions. I'm going to get to right now, and let me go back up the chat here. So, I love I love to see people's faces when I do Ventura Highway. I have the harmony setting on the chorus set just right, and it blows people away. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You got you, you got to dial it in right, but when you do. There's just nothing like it, and I've, I've used sure that. The chords are right too. You're yeah. not changing. You got to change a little early, maybe or yeah. Yeah. whatever. Play cleanly. Make sure you're in tune. I've I've actually found some. I don't know if it's me, but I think some pickups work better than others as well. I, I always have a problem with the D. An open D sometimes doesn't track for me. I, if I play the bar chord D, it always yeah. tracks. So there's and a, that's uh, that's where under saddle shines over right. um, any body resonance at all. Right, because they're cleaner. Clean the sound, yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but same thing with, with my band. I did a show once, three-piece band, and no other singers, and I used the pedal just for harmonies, and they were just blown away. They're like, wow. Yeah. I mean, they're like, we don't need to sing. I'm like, well, yeah, they don't sing. So that, that's just such a It's useful. best that you don't. There's, yeah. There have been times when I say, uh, I got this. It's okay. Because you're just going to mess it up. <laughs> Why not? I mean, why? You know, I'm, I'm all for I'm all for making things easier without kind of cheating. You know, it's it's that great middle ground. That's what I love about it. Um, Frankie says, relax. Dynamic mics seem to work better than large diaphragm condenser mics. Is it just me and lack of finesse with the play acoustic? You are absolutely right, and we advise it actually in our materials in our manuals and stuff. Condenser mics of which your LDC is one. Um, sound great for recording, but for our harmony stuff, they let in way too much, right? Because yeah. those condensers are picking up the sound of somebody's clothes brushing 20 feet away, right? So they're picking up everything else. And our pitch recognition algorithm is going, huh? What, what's that pitch? What's that? Oh, he's singing now. And it yeah, so it's best to use a dynamic. And actually, we make a mic called an MPC, MP75, which has a very, very tight pattern mm. uh, that can help solve that. Or uh, Audix OM7, those those are very tight patterns as well. Yeah, that, that's that's important for sure. Um, okay, here's a question that I wanted to ask as well. So does this mean an update for Voice Live 3 Extreme is not going to happen? Yes, it is not. Okay, so that, that those products are kind of done now right i'm afraid i'm afraid they are what they are we have to move on we've got only so many engineers and we're working on the future and yeah. vl3 works pretty good yeah you know it works pretty good no i agree I, i'd rather you worked on new products than you know i think i think it's time i think it's a, that's a good thing yeah chris decker says the es1 didn't work for me very interesting to hear to hear how much you like the es2 yeah they're very different pickups the es1 was like a magnetic Extremely. thing completely different yeah they're very different it's gone better with every generation i still personally think that the irs could improve that further but that's just my opinion Steve, you'll get feedback if you if you use the es2 with its body resonance pickup with its you know the, the picking mm -hmm. up more of the body and you you add an ir to that you could use it for recording maybe but i would say live if you get any volume you're, you're absolutely right the um the ir is basically recreating the microphone a full IR will feedback like a microphone, but what, mm -hmm. what they're doing with pedals like the Bag Soundscape and the Tone Dexter is they're making the IR and then they're taking out those problematic frequencies for you. 
So they, okay. they in fact do not feed. I can attest to that. They don't feed back. Yeah. If, it, if it's done the right way, yeah. and also if you blend it in and not put the whole thing on there so you still get that definition, it sounds really pretty phenomenal, I have to, I have to yeah. say. Um, I, and I, if you've got the Bucks, yeah. I, I heard uh, a Martin the other day with the F1 pickup or something. It's yeah. got the round. Yeah. And it has its own built-in impulses in them. I think yeah. they're Aura. I don't know. Aura, yeah. I, this is before I bought my Tater, and I was just like, what are you doing? And the guy said, yeah, yeah this guitar cost me six grand, and it does this thing. And I went, okay, I ain't got six grand, but wow, yeah, there is hope. Actually, but that's the original Aura technology, and they've phased that out now. Martin don't want the holes anymore. So they're using, there's a new one, as Aura HD is in their latest guitar, and that is about four grand. That might be the one you're talking about, actually. It's called the Aura Blend. And it's using yeah. HD, which sounds very believable. Check check out the when you got time, Tom. Check out the the pickup demos on my channel. Check yeah, out the one okay. of the Aura HD. When mm -hmm. I was when I was editing the video, I actually mixed up the real mic and the guitar. <laughs> but that's true. But the thing yeah. is that that pickup doesn't pick up the body sound, and this is where I went down this rabbit hole because I wanted body sound and I wanted nothing in the guitar and I wanted it to sound believable. And that's why I, I went down this rabbit hole of pickups. And that's why I'm hoping that someone like you could put some of this stuff in a pedal just to improve the sound so we don't need to go down those, those rabbit holes, you know. But we'll, we'll see. Um, Chris Decker says, besides the harmonies, the TC feature I value the most is having both vocal and guitar delay in sync with every song with a single foot switch. Yeah, because when you tap the tempo, it syncs everything. It syncs the delays of everything at once. That is, that is a very cool... Yeah. Wouldn't it be really cool if we put some of that Ditto Jam technology in so that you don't even have to tap the tempo in because it's yeah. picking up the beat? Because, yeah, why, why can't it just detect the speed that you're playing at and do it for you? How hard you? could it be? Automated. Oh, it, how hard could it be? It's extremely difficult, but we do it. So, yeah. Mm. I think, wasn't there another feature where you could play the, you just, you just play on the strings? You basically tap in the tempo on the strings. Well, that's on a flashback, like yeah. on a TC electronic flashback. You can... Yeah tap the tempo there are you know those the uh, digitech trio had that technology where yeah. you sort of you could the the groove of your playing would be translated into a drum and bass groove mm. you know you could confuse it easily but it was the same thing like a ditto jam it was like the first product of its kind and it worked pretty good and it was amazing landmark but it wasn't perfect so are you still working with tc electronic for your effects and things like that um, we do work closely with them. The, the music tribe of which we are all, all our brands are affiliated or under, um, we share technology a lot and we share, we're, we're moving even further down that pike. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's cool. I'm a lot of what you hear in, in voice life three and stuff like that is our emulations of TC electronic stuff mm -hmm. and there is some actual tc electronic code in there so it's a it's a mishmash there but as we go further to our next products uh you can you'll you'll, you'll be able to see lots and lots more interplay all right we just saw the the plethora that looks that looks like a nice pedal and the plethora pedal and that's got the yep. app and the screen looks very nice and um yep. so we're all, we're all i guess we're all hoping that you go down that that route of course and then what what are your thoughts on amp modeling because again a lot of companies now are doing um, profiling or impulse responses for amp. I mean, is is that something you look into as well for the for the for the actual speaker models for a, a new voice live? I don't know that we would do that, although I'd love to, mm. uh, just as an intellectual exercise. But um, I do know a guitar company whose initials start not unlike ours that is looking at something like that. Mm. Yeah, I would love to see IRs for cabs because then you could use them for the acoustic um, stuff, IRs as well, maybe. Of course. Um, Steve says, the problem is the optimum, optimum sound for finger picking is different to the optimum sound for strumming. Yeah, I agree. It's nice if you can have two sounds saved, one for finger picking and lead and one, one for strumming. So you have different oh, yeah. EQs. Yeah, I agree with that too. Right. right. Okay, here's a question. So since the since the lockdown here, I've been using these in ears. I used to be completely against in ears. I wanted the PA behind me blasting out. I wanted a real amp blasting out. Because of because I'm doing these interviews and and using these for the streams, I'm getting yeah. very used to in ears. 
And I know that Voice Live 3 incorporates them very well. And I'm thinking the future for me might be in-ears because I really love them. Um, Chris mm. says, do you, do you personally use in-ears when you perform? Asking you or me? Uh, you. <laughs> um, I do not mm. ever. Wow. Um, I probably could, but I like the interaction. I'm playing smaller venues like restaurants and bars. Mm. And I talk to the audience quite a bit. And, yeah. I, and I, I can't, I have to go, I can't go, oh, sorry, what? Yeah. And then try to figure out how to get it in. So I don't use them. I'd love to. I, I think they'd be really cool. Um, and, and But I also love the sound of, like I said, my bows, because it, it kicks the bottom and mm. the top end is very sweet and broad. Yeah. So, so I feel this, I get a little bit of visceral poom when, when bassy things happen, which you get, you get a little bit here, but you don't get the, you know, the, the little punch. I agree. You don't, you don't feel the sound and there's something about cranking the sound up, which is nice. And I said to Chris as well, my, my fear is if people talk to you for a request, you might not hear them and have to yeah. play around with them. On the other side, I do restaurants too. They can get very noisy. And sometimes I think I'd like to yep. just zone out and also have stereo effects. And because I always have one PA speaker behind my left ear. So I like mm -hmm. the idea of having the sound in both. Yeah, I don't yep. know. I'm definitely going to explore it. And I think for a band or something or a function band, I'd like to do that just to save on gear and, and stage volume. But I get then you've got to be careful with mixing and things like that. And you don't feel the sound. I think there's pros and cons for both. But I do like the way you incorporated that into the pedal because that's that's, yeah. that's very clever. Because I've tried that. I tried them with the play acoustic and it wouldn't drive the headphones loud enough. But the Voice Live 3 has the headphone amp built in so you have more volume and you can have certain things and like have your click in the headphones and not at the front. And the reason yeah, it's a separate mixer for what you're hearing in yeah. there. Uh, do you do you use the guitar headphone cable, the one that's where it's integrated? I used one but a few years ago, and I think it stopped working, so I didn't use it Probably anymore. Broke. Yeah, I yeah, think unfortunately the quality wasn't as high as we would have hoped from that for that. But the idea is stellar. It's like uh, yeah. one cable, yeah, two things. I also think wireless is becoming more appealing to people, and I think people want to be wireless with in ears and guitars. Again, I haven't seen the company really get it right yet, but I think that would be really cool if 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 TC made a could get could get that right. That'd be a great thing to have an all in one wireless headphone and guitar system, uh, maybe. But yeah, I, I love I love the integration, and I love it because you could loop with a band to a click track. But if you, I would rather you you did the did a, the the jam technology, so you could just do that without the click track because a click track will always be a bit. Um, I mean, I don't mind them, and I've been using them lately, but it's nice to not have to rely on them all the time as well for the same reason about the in-ears thing we were talking about. Um, One thing we found when we were developing Ditto Jam was, and we were used to, like I'm used to playing with click because I play kit and I play other stuff that I have a click in. And um, when we were jamming for the first time, we got Ditto Jam to actually work. Hmm. You know, we had players in, you know, in my studio and we're, we're singing and playing. And you make a loop and you know what happens? The difference is the feeling. Because normally when a loop's going, everybody's like, and yeah, they're, and they're yeah. a little bit on edge to play yeah. like that. Yeah. That went away. Yeah. We were like, hey, yeah. I can just ignore that. Yeah. And we can concentrate on make having some fun and making some groove here. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah that, was, it, that was pretty prominent. I, I really hope I see that tech um, in the future and, and, and more, more stuff like that as well, like things we hadn't thought about. Things we didn't know yep. we need that completely changed the whole industry. That's that's how yep. I that's I love that stuff so much. Um, if any of your users have ideas or anything, perhaps they could contact you or something and just sort of say, "Oh yeah, but I forgot to ask Tom about this." Or, mm. you know, wouldn't it be great if they could do that? And you know, we of course we're listening. Yeah, definitely. No, I encourage it, and I'm I'm pretty active on the on the forums on the Facebook groups for them too. There's a great community there. I can tell that they're as as passionate about the products as I am. Because again, I think there's a lot of people that use these products to make a living. There's a lot of people with a, you know, you get a guitar with a great pickup and the play acoustic and a two button foot switch and you can travel around and make a living with that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. And I think we all just want to see more stuff. I think that's, that's what we're, we're excited. Um, yeah. Frankie said, hey, TC, uh, TC Helicon is here. So thanks for joining us. That's awesome. They're, they're watching us. <laughs> and Okay, John Lane. Hi, Aaron and Tom. 
Will there be a Mike Mechanic 3? Oh. Tell me what you'd like it to do. There we go. I will put the question back to you, John. Put it in the comments for us. Fred yeah. says, I started to use Quantaloop for my looping. Yep, I was messing around with that because the Line 6 Helix allows you to set up controllers and control apps, and it actually is pretty a pretty stable app. And I was getting some really good looping working with that because the Helix can pass audio and MIDI over USB. So with one cable, you can actually loop and send the audio back and forth and use that as your looper, okay. which is really, and that, that's a really powerful app. That's, and then you can use the app or the pedal or a, comb a combination of both. Yep. But again, as cool as it was, and actually that's the most luck I've, most, you know, luck I've had with apps and, and hardware, there's still that thing in my head. It might, it might just be my age or something, I don't know, but there's still that thing of like, well, I'd rather the pedal just did everything. But it, it's, it, it's so much to ask, though, isn't it, for one pedal to do everything because there's just so many things. But that, that is yeah. the dream. But the apps can supplement in those cases. That is, that is the best app so far I've used for that kind the of dream thing. Is, the dream is for the product to do everything. Right. Simply. And, and No, to do everything and we sit at the bar and, and have a beer. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! I, I get such a charge out of playing well sometimes. Yes, when yes. I, when I holograms. Let's talk about holograms. When's that coming? I am. <laughs> I'm a hologram right now. I'm actually, you know, I'm somewhere else. This, is, this isn't real, right? Uh, okay. Uh, Mark. Okay, Mark Bell. Do you know Mark Bell? Uh, the name rings a. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tom. He's got he's got the whole he's got the whole essay here. Okay, hi Tom, great to see you live. Have watched your videos for years, and I own a few pieces of your gear. Right, I'd like to ask Tom about the ongoing problem <clears throat> that seems to have affected seemingly hundred. Okay, let's 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 just get this out here because actually I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I recently got the Voice Live Three Extreme. I still yes. think it's a fantastic product. There are people, and I think forums are dangerous places because problems get magnified. But I need my gear to be reliable, and some people have mentioned this thing where you turn it on and it doesn't work. Now, that can happen with any gear. I totally get that. But can you just give us a little insight or statement into your thoughts behind that? There seems to be a problem with some pedals where they power up to a blue, a blue are, they, are they calling it the blue screen? Blue screen. Blue screen, white screen. Like, it doesn't power up. Power yeah. up. You have to do something inside. Another question. I've been reading online that um, you guys aren't doing customer support anymore, but I called, like nine months ago and had amazing support and they helped me fix my, my play acoustic fixed up. You're still offering customer support over the phone, right? The company is in transition and yeah. I'm not up on the latest about where customer support is. Of course we're dedicated to it. Hmm. Um, I don't know what the mechanism is because it does tend to, to move around a little bit. I know we've got good customer support in Las Vegas um, up until the end of last year, we had great customer support just from TC Helicon. You could send us stuff on Facebook and Robbie would answer you and say, yeah, that was that. Um, but yeah, so customer support is an ongoing uh, challenge and we're still working for it. So I'm sorry that's that sounds like a, a, a cop out. Um, if I were you, I'd be I would be just as angry. The blue screen issue. Yeah. There were quality issues with with those a lot of those units, and what was happening was the information wasn't getting back to us at TC Helicon to say all these units are dying in the field. All the all the support people were doing was replacing them and sending them back, mm -hmm. and we were going we're going along da, 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 and then somebody says hundreds of units have been dying, and we're like, mm -hmm. well, we could have designed our way out of that, you know, with a different part, a different circuit board. A different connector um so yeah that that is a problem and uh we apologize of course um i i wish i could give you maybe robbie or somebody could t chime in and, and give us the the customer support voodoo link you know so so we know who to contact but it's you know you can go to our site and there's probably a, a contact link there the reason i sound so equivocal about that is because my head is in development. Mm. Um, I don't really go down that as much. So I'm thinking about new features and I'm thinking about engineers building stuff and I'm thinking about getting China to build stuff and mm. that kind of stuff. So I, I'm not up to the minute on that and I apologize. Mm. 
Well, I appreciate you talking about it. And I mean, I just got mine new. So obviously you get the year warranty, right? And all I can yep. say is when I called up last year, they were so helpful. Like they, they, they really couldn't have been any better. It was fantastic. So yeah, it'd be great to get an update on what's happening with that. But I mean, personally, I'm just glad that you offered to do this chat and it sounds like you are releasing new products. And I, I imagine along those lines, we're going to see more from you. I just, you know, I think, I think some people may be feeling a bit... Uh, frustrated because it feels like there was that radio silence like we didn't really know what was happening so that's why i'm really glad you're here today to, to give us some info and you know and feel free to come on here anytime tom to discuss products or things or i think these q and a's are great too because they're very you know we could just talk between us about how we're feeling and what's going on with the products and i think that's yeah. i think today's chat will really help with that stuff but if tc wants to let us know info on what's happening with the support and things right now that'd be great i know there's a forum you moved the forum over right there is an official forum yeah. you can go to for support so yeah, yeah I, I i think that's that's important to make sure you go there and th that's really cool because that's oftentimes users helping users yeah like somebody says, oh, I got, oh, no, wait a minute, I got that problem. And and I overcame it by this. And that I, I love to see that inter interplay. But tell you what, yeah, I'll I'll look into that and I'll send you a note, Aaron, that you can share with your um, folks. Yeah, I'd love to. That'd be great. Cool. Um, Sam Sings, question for Tom. What's the most unexpected, mind-blowing use of the Voice Live 3 Extreme that you've seen? Oh, um, Oh, we've seen so many people use them in, in ways that we never figured they would be using. Well, Aaron using the kick drum. Yeah, for, I love that. I want to, I want for, to see that in the future. You know, the awesome. metronome. Yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. I, I, can't, I can't think of anything in particular. Um, I use it in all sorts of different ways. Like when I play with this big band, I, I use it just for the guitar sound. And... Mm. I turn off the speaker modeling and I run it into a deluxe. So I, mm. I only use the modeling for when I want distortion and overdrive, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, oh, there's this, there's this one looper guy. What's his name? He does like U2 tunes and things like that. And he uses a VL3 mm. and he's amazing. Cause he integrates it with um, a couple of boss pedals and he, he's got this pedal board. Yeah. What's his name? It's, it's ridiculous. Like he has to actually walk over here and, and then come over <laughs> here. And, um, yeah, that. I wish I could remember the guy's name, but he was he was a looper and he was using it very very effectively. How do you use it, questioner? Uh, Sam sings. Yeah. How do you use it? That, that, that's. A, I mean, that, that's the thing. It does so much. There are so many ways to use it, right? And I'm sure we all we all use it completely differently. That, that, yeah. Some people actually make their own little. Uh, palm switches with a 3D printer, put them on top of the switches and they pound it on a desktop. Uh, you know, like you can get the loops going and stuff like that. So you can use it kind of like a, a Boss 505, you know, which is all the, those push buttons. Mm. Um, some people do that kind of stuff. I just wish somebody would take the display out and move it up on their mic stand. You know, maybe run some kind of weird cable down there and wire it up yourself because I love wiring it up, uh, wiring up stuff myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, hot wiring stuff. Chris Tidstrom, you, you might have heard of him. I know Chris yeah, he's, he's very, um, he's very active in the groups. In hey, my Chris. in my trio, we all use TC Helicon pedals. Great for backup vocals. That's true. Isn't there a trick where you can turn off the lead vocal and you just have the harmonies come out? <laughs> That's a good. You can use it just for harmonies if you want. It's a little uh, off-putting to sing with, <laughs> but you can also use it just to have to change the unison sound of your voice. Like if I'm at the NAMM shows, I used to do like, a, give me one reason to stay here, right? Because I've got a fairly, you know, s slim voice, but I'd make myself sound like Tracy Chapman. I'd add down gender. So I was like, give me one reason to stay here. And it was mm. so killer. So, yes, you can turn off your lead voice and you can use a harmony voice to replace your voice if you want. Yeah, or I've, as well. I've, I've heard of people. Or you can sing. Uh, actually, for your friend Sam Sings, mm. here. And I, and I have to say it only from my point of view, what I saw, used it. We used to do Stayin' Alive with my trio called the Tom Lang Gang. And, you know, we were a rock trio and loud and proud and everything. And I had a VL3. And we did Stayin' Alive because the harmonies, when you set them to a key, Work perfectly for the ha 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 staying alive, staying alive. And I was going ha 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 staying alive. But anyway, in the verse, 
I had it shift my voice up an octave, so I used to have to sing, well, you can sit, tell by the way I use my walk, I'm a woman's man. But, and it came out front like, well, you can tell. And I put a little extra vibrato on it. And I think people loved it. They were dancing. They looked up at us and sort of went, they marveled. They're going, that singer sounds almost like the Bee Gees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love that stuff. I love the... You know, I try to be really trendy by using the um, the telephone voices and the oh yeah, you know, do Drake songs with that um, yep. auto tune and that kind of stuff. It's fun. It makes people if if, if people are starting to, to zone out, it makes them just wake up. They're like, "What's that?" Or they yep. or they laugh it's or they true. laugh, and that's fine too. It's entertainment. Um, also, if you've got a low it's voice, huge. you can add the, the octave above, and it just gives it that pr in the background. It gives it that presence. You know, just to cut yep. through a bit. Yeah, I mean, there's just, it's just endless ways to use it, right? Um, Chris Decker says, wow, can't wait to see the new stuff. I know, I can't. I'm, I'm, Me too. I'm, I'm really, really excited now. I mean, yeah. yes. <laughs> so, yeah, middle of next month, um, check back with us. Yeah, I can't wait. And like I said, if you want to come on here and do a, a show just about one product, I'm always happy to do that as well. That would be really fun. Um, Sam Sings. Will there be a call and response harmony in the next pedal, like a delay throw, but only the echo is harmonized? Interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so you'd go, uh, you'd have a groove, do, 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 and you go to, ba, da, da, and then you start singing, and the harmonies would go, mm -hmm, mm. in time. Mm. Yeah, that might be kind of neat. Yeah, like yeah. an arpeggiator kind of. Um, a great idea. The GSXR says, is Laura Clapp still part of TC Helicon? No, she's moved on to Sure. Yeah, yeah, I know I know her pretty well. I see her at the, the NAMM show. Yeah. I go there. But she, yeah, she was I'm great. I'm trying she's... to get her to sing on one of my songs. We're doing a lot of COVID collaborations these days with, mm. I'm using, yeah, I'm doing with, in fact, a guy in New York and I are doing mm. uh, some songs. Um, but I just spoke to Laura the other day and it's like, can you sing one for me, please? Yeah, she's great. She's, she's like, great. She's, Bring it. she's been going live too. She's still singing. She's great. She's a great singer. Oh my gosh. We've, we use her files. Laura, sorry. We use her recorded files for our test files and we mangle them beyond repair. Mm. But it's interesting. You put a pitch corrector on her, mm. there's no difference. Mm. Her, her singing pitch is so ridiculously accurate. Um, you know, when there's times when she'd come out to Victoria and she, I just stick a mic in front of her and say, "Can you make a file for us so we can sing?" And she'd sing something, and just just knock it off, you know, to take. And then I'm I've been using it for the last ten years, and it's just like I can put a pitch corrector on it, and I can't hear the difference. It's just like, oh my gosh, I have to put me in a pitch corrector to take the difference. Mm. Yeah, she's a great she's a great singer. She's really cool. And a great person too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I was watching some other of your demo. Uh, people the other day and they were all they've all been really good and your stuff is your stuff is great too i love when you use the is it the the, the talk box and those those effects that's fun oh yeah the talk box yeah yeah there's a we've got that talk box synth pedal which is that's mm. pretty cool actually I, I know it's difficult for some people to they don't like the idea of singing while they're playing yeah right but the sound of it is it is sounds, so killer it sounds if, cool. if you're confident with going while you're playing, yeah. which is in a sense what you're doing. You know, I've, I've been looking lately. I was just looking today at things like the Godan with the MIDI pickup and these kind of things too. It'd be great to have like that kind of stuff incorporated. So you got, I, I was reviewing the Fishman, um, you stick it on the guitar and they've got an app and all the, again, all these things just to add more kind of sounds to, to things like that. Um, yeah. Did TC ever think about designing their own acoustic guitar pickup that does stuff like that? Was that never? Uh, no. no, not not really. Mm. It it seems so unnecessary in these days of impulse responses. If mm. if you're going to primarily use your impulse response, it's just getting anything out of the guitar that's readable, and an under saddle is perfect for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sam says that cable is gold, meaning the headphone cable. That is, would, would we still see things like that in future products? Do you see value in um, those? As, as I understand now, we're, we're um, 
investigating improving the quality of that particular cable mm, good good i actually i saw some made by other people online but they were they were too good they were like two thick cables together so you can't really the cable, oh, no. you know you just what you want you want it to be slim and ergonomic yeah. definitely yeah. um or even wireless i mean i can i can see people wanting you to build wireless in-ear monitors and guitar re receivers into the pedal my only fear with that is what if there's issues and it's all built into one, you know, with the, with the wireless technology. Because I just, yeah, no. it'd have to be done wireless, really well. No matter what you do, uh, yeah. I don't know about analogs wireless so much, but is latency. Yeah. And I'm the latency cop at TC, Hel TC Helicon. Mm. I've, I've been, you know, I had to say, uh, no, we have to step back here. And can we code a new way of making it so the latency is a little less, a little less, a little less? Um, that so. That's one of the problems because you sing into a, you sing into a mic and it adds latency with the transmission to the wireless thing mm. uh, to the wireless receiver and then that goes to a vocal processor that has its own even dry latency on top of that and then you add harmonies which have a little bit more latency you mm. start to get this and I don't know about you but that makes me nuts. So and we can fix it. We're going to stronger, more powerful processors. Very good. What what is the noticeable amount of latency for a device? When do you start to feel and hear it? Um, okay, on an acoustic guitar, you you can feel five milliseconds okay. because you hear the acoustic guitar so much louder in your ear, and then when it comes out yeah. five milliseconds later to uh, an amp or something, it goes. Brr, brr, but if it's an electric guitar, you don't notice it as much. We, we figure it's around, around you can get away with 10 milliseconds with yeah. an electric guitar yeah. because the electric guitar isn't so loud acoustically to your ear that you're hearing the difference. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, any latency is too much for me. It's, it's the, it's like the right? helix I've measured is like two milliseconds and I'm like, yes, mm. you guys rock. Yeah. I've been that's, why they, that's why they get that feel. I've been hearing that too from people and, um, Someone said with in ears. In fact, James from Tone Dexter said with in ears, you hear the, you really hear it because you've got them in your in your head, and you can hear the sound kind of around. Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. But yeah, again, it's the future. It's just got to be right. It's just got to be. It's just got to work well. Um, okay, so Sam sings. Click track doesn't allow for dynamics in tempo like Zeppelin's. I'm going to leave you is 130, but ramps up to 140. Exactly. That's why we need that that jam looper in there so we can speed up and not get in trouble um oh yeah but you, do you really <laughs> want to speed up i gotta admit i've been using drum machines lately and i'm enjoying being forced to work on my timing i think working on your timing and pitch is incredibly important but it's also nice to have that human element as well i don't know it's a, it's a fine line this stuff it really is yeah it's a fine line i i can't stand uh, what, listening to a band, and as soon as they get to the chorus, they start racing. To me, it's just like, oh, you just threw the groove out the window. Yeah, it's gone. Fled says I use Voice Live Three to control Quanta Loop. Yes, you can, but I, I think that I think the Looper is great in the Voice Live Three. Again, very ahead of its time. The Looper is in the yeah. Helix, uh, like a minute Looper, very basic. Um, yeah. The Looper and the Voice Live Three again, so ahead of its time, so good. Um, I know, I know, Quanta Loop has even more. It has like four tracks and all different things in there, kind of like fading and all different things. But um, that 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 is a great looper in the in the voice. Have line. you tried the looper in the Voice Live Touch Two? No, I haven't. There's, I haven't used those two quite products. Quite a different looper in there. It's a six track looper, and it has what we call the the the. It's a strip, hmm. and we have effects built into that strip. So if you build a loop, um, you've you've got access to individual tracks to do things with, and that hmm. that drag strip will do things like. Bones, da, boom, dum, dum, ba, 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 Voice Live 4, right? You'd bring all that stuff into that pedal, I presume? That would be a great idea. Yeah. 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 I, I, I just I just love loopers and I want to see them just evolve 
even more. Yeah. And like I said, the whole thing, the whole thing about having the MIDI sounds, the bass line, the whole, the whole one person show. That, yeah, that's a little harder. The bass line, you're going to need a split pickup. Um, Is that not unless... possible just with software? To, like like the harmonies. Well, like if you've got a guitar player going A A A A D T, D D E F sharp minor. Um, if you do have something like that, the bass will never go boom 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 boom. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say it'll never, but it'll, but it'll go boom 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 yeah. boom 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 boom. Right? Because there's this processing latency right now where it's got to recognize. Oh, he changed chords. Do something. Right? Yeah. It's it's really at that level of of basic level <laughs> of understanding chords. Um, well, as we get faster and faster processors, and we do this more because you know we recognize chords obviously because we're recognizing chords to make your harmonies come out right. Right. But as you probably noticed, sometimes if you go don't get and you're singing, it goes da. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It just takes a sec to get there, and you and you 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 either don't do that or you play the chord a little early, yeah. you, know, you get around those things. We understand that those exist. Mm. The fact that we actually even recognize it and change the harmonies is revolutionary mm. from what we used to do. Mm. But as these processors get faster and as our code gets better and as we learn more, then eventually maybe we'll be able to go boom, 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 boom. Right, it's latency that's a problem. You got, yeah. Latency is, yeah. is the with, whole deal. With everything, yeah. 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 So I mean, I mean, what are we going to see? Like, the harmonies improve even more then, or is it, are they kind of? Is there is there is there scope to improve the harmony sound even more than we've got? There now? is scope to do that, mm -hmm. um, and we're always working towards that. So, uh, VL4, you know, a product like VL4 would would likely have better harmonies, just more natural. Maybe the chord changes will be a little faster. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know that it's going to be like solo them, and it sounds like. Uh, Beyonce. I don't know if we'll get there. Don't want anybody to think that. Is it? Um, it's, it's, it's bugging me. Is it just me with the open D chord? Is, do you, is it something to do with the way the guitar is intonated that I sometimes have a problem with that, where I don't with a bar chord? Is that just me that has that, or is, have you ever noticed that yourself? Um, I don't. I don't have a problem with any particular chord. Mm. Um, I have. Yeah. I, no, I, I don't. Maybe it's the fact that uh, it may be intonation, but I, but it would have to be pretty far out to throw our stuff out. Mm. Um, it may be that your guitar is resonating at a non D chord related harmonic. Yeah. Uh, that's that's loud, like your guitar has a, I don't know, some weird thing. Um, it could be in my head as well. I might go in my head that 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 doesn't work on that one, so now I always sing slightly flat. <laughs> Chris Decker, my request for any new acoustic all in one is if there's an overdrive effect, please include a clean blend feature so you can blend the clean sound in with the I mean I mean distorting an acoustic is hard, for acoustic? right? For acoustic, yeah. yeah. Well, I guess I, I like having the clean blend on any pedal, like the fractal stuff. Everything has a mix control. Everything. Okay. I think that's cool. Yeah. Especially for acoustic. It's hard to do acoustic sounds and, and do them well. Um, I also Although I have I have done that I have shredded solos on full full on hundred percent saturated overdriven guitar sound because it's way more fun it sustains, yeah. -ba, which your acoustic guitar never would do right yeah, yeah. Uh, I, but I understand that's a that's a good suggestion thank you for that Chris I like the whole um, automatic feedback reduction thing where if there's feedback it just sucks it out um, have you have you ever worked on things like that. That would be a great idea yeah. to work on. Yeah, that. you should really put that in there. It'd be awesome. My own, my, yep. my own sound engineer. Um, I use check it. back in June. We might have something fixed up for that. I don't know. This this app you mentioned. Are we talking about the harmonies in that being tracked by the guitar or just harmonies in an app? Both. Wow. I better get a new iPhone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that iPhone four is just not going to cut it anymore. I need the, the latest um, iPad Pro for my birthday, which is coming up soon. Actually, my birthday is June twenty second. If that ties in with anything, Tom, I'll send oh, you my address later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I use it mostly to fill out the sound for acoustic and add harmonies and doublers. This is Sam. Oh yeah, we did that for the staff item 
for the school talent show, but we're living on a prayer. Awesome and hilarious. Yeah, it can just be fun. That's the thing, isn't it? It can just be fun sometimes as well. I always do um, no diggity, and I always use the telephone voice on that, and it just makes people laugh, and it's just it's just fun, you know. We used to do All Star. Oh, yeah. that glitters yeah. is going. Yeah, love that. Rusty Benson, not a perfect solution, but one in ear works well for me. Allows me to keep an ear on the live PA. Interesting. Rusty, do you find that it's almost as if the, the other ear, the un, the exposed ear, turns up the gain? Do you find that that it seems loud and kind of harsh? And because I've tried one ear before, and it's like, wow, it seems like this one gets hurt more. I know what you mean because it's it, yeah. it's more it's, it maybe it overcompensates because the other one is plugged. Yeah, so that's what it feels more. like to me. Yeah. And I'm like, Ugh, I'd rather do two, you know, because. Yeah. You got to save your hearing, man. Oh, boy. And that's my fear with in-ears, too. Sometimes I crank them too much to get that yeah. feel, and I'm blasting. Yeah. I need it to, to, to tell me not to do that because I can blast them out. It's not good. Yeah. Um, that's John Lane. Mike Mechanic 2 is great, but I find the dials far too sensitive. Um, too I would, sensitive. I would like the oh, for like the reverb mix, I guess? Yeah, it says I can see. Half a mil adjustment, and then you have to have too much. I would like the correct correction dial to go make the echo reverb dials bigger with numbers. Hmm. Oh, okay. These are, these yeah, are great comments. That's good. Did we? Did you get anything back about what the Mike Mechanic Three is supposed to do? Um, we asked that question. Let me see. I'm, I'm almost at the end of the comments. So if if if, if, yeah, I, if I have, you have to scroll. If I have, I'll get it. And if not, please um, put it okay. in there now. If you if no, that's interesting. I just just would like to know what what you'd like improved. If there's anything in particular that speaks to you i never use that product is that just for singers only just for the microphone yeah it's just for microphone but it does give you a little bit of correction and a little bit of reverb and it gives you adaptive tone which mm. is a big big deal it doesn't sound yes. like much oh it's tone well i everything has tone but adaptive tone is a it's like an iceberg it's there's this huge amount of processing down below that is a accommodating your particular voice, varying the amount of brightness, mm. rolling off just the right amount of bass, and adding compression for your average level wherever you move. Like you'll, you can sing on a, right on top of a mic and be singing and the compression is, is working nicely. But typically, if you move away from the mic, compression doesn't trigger mm. because the threshold's gone down. We adapt. Over yeah. just a very short time, you can be singing back here, and it's adapted to you, so you're compressing back here just as much as you were up here. So adaptive tone, it's it's my secret uh, weapon. And a mic I use with adaptive tone and my voice, I sing very airy. Mm. I'm not like a, you know, a, what do you call it? I don't, I don't sing really big like that. I sing mm. ah, da, 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 lots mm. of air. And with this particular mic and adaptive tone, it's just like unbelievable. I think people don't run for the exit, so I guess it's okay. One thing I've often discussed with people is, is it best to have the mic right on your mouth or keep like an inch away when you're using your products? Or um, does it has to be right on the mic. You, you okay. don't want any other, if you've got the harmony turned on mm. or doubling uh, or pitch correction, the effects that use the pitch of your voice and can be confused by other pitches that it's hearing, guitar, bass, piano. Um, it's best to just make sure that your voice is the only thing that's coming into that mic. Mm. Chris, Chris Tystrom says, I tune the high E slightly flat to lessen the D chord thing. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, I, I know D chords can be um, slightly out with the whole intonation thing, the whole open chord thing with that. Yeah, so that, that's, that's a good idea. And he agrees about. I, I hear that. James Taylor tunes his yeah. individually. Like yeah. he puts this a little couple of cents, and I'm like, wow, that's yeah. obsessive. But he sounds fantastic. Yeah. So what he, do has, do? he has his own tuning. Um, and then and then he says he agrees with Chris Decker about the blending of the distortion with the acoustic. Yeah, yeah, I like those things. I like when the distortion's kind of in the background, like a pad or something, and the acoustics up front. That could be it's good for saturation on your voice too because you don't mm -hmm. always want your voice 100% saturated. Right. It's it's a cool thing like if we had if we had the the ability with our megaphone to blend your dry in there a little bit, mm. I think that would help out a lot. 
Yeah. Um, and yeah, these are the kind of suggestions that maybe won't uh, come into our brains, but you guys give them to us and, um, and we thank you. And hopefully it'll, it'll get into the product and you'll be able to be blown away by the product. I mean, Voice Life 4, uh, that product, the definition that we've got from, from people and the ideas that are going around in our head, and I'm not going to give you any idea of timelines, I can't. Um, that was my next. Is good, nothing short of fantastic. That was my next question. When are we going to see this thing? <laughs> I, I know we 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 got some feedback from our our Facebook fans and mm. like, man, you asked me this stuff two years ago, three mm. years ago. Well, I don't know, maybe not three years ago, but yeah, we did, and and uh, we're we're working as hard as we can. Uh, uh. I have to ask though, are we still talking like ideas on paper or are we talking prototypes yet? Uh, work has been done and things are moving. <laughs> soon. We'll just say soon. Coming soon to a music <laughs> store retailer near you. I only ask because I'm such a fan and I just, I know. I. I can start. I want the darn thing. I can start. Oh, so that's oh, so it exists. You heard it here first, everyone. Um, I can start charging more money for my shows when I sound better. So that's why I need it. You see, um, <laughs> I, I, you know, just a guy with an acoustic guitar who's not using any processing or loopers, that is a good performer. He sings, talks, tells stories, plays the right songs. There's so much more to it than just sounding great. You know, I, I, I look on in awe when I see somebody who talks to somebody in the audience and plays with them a little bit and then sings and plays the perfect song with the best voice and the nicest guitar delivery. And I'm like, I don't need all this crap. And then I go back to my thing and I go, <laughs> I need all this crap. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I see it now. I see a lot of people on the Manhattan circuit that are not using anything, and they just entertain. They talk. They talk to the crowd, and they don't use anything. And and it's still it's still important for me to play the songs without anything. But I just yeah. also love the way to bring in the stuff as well. And I, I, again, it's a bit like the pickups. It's more for us in a way. It's fun yeah. for us to be able to take a solo and sound bigger than we are. Right? Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I'd be bo I'd be so bored without soloing. That's why looping. I I love the looping part because yeah. if I if I couldn't twist off or shred, I'd be pretty bored. Yeah, and I think a lot of electric players that now do acoustic shows think like that because I think I think you know, Chris Decker likes to solo too. So I, I I totally get that, and I've just used it as a way to learn to solo because when I was in a duo, the guitarist would shred every song, and I'd let him. He was great, but yeah. I never I never improved as a guitarist because I was always just backing him up. Fair enough. Now, exactly. now I get to practice every night, and that's great. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying you should practice on stage, but you know what I mean. I get to try new things. Um, yeah, Tony, try those dissonance, those flat nines. Yeah, love that. <laughs> oh, that's what it, I thought. I thought it was a mistake, but it's a flat nine. Um, Tom Wars says hi. Good to see you. Um, Voice Live Three Chain question: Do harmonies work better with pitch correction, like the chain feels like vocal in pitch correction than harmonies? I I presume if you don't sing in tune, the pitch correction will help the harmonies track better, right? Uh, yes, because yes, because the harmonies live on top of either the pitch corrected or your dry voice, and if you're pitch corrected, the harmonies will live on top of that. Mm. The harmonies can be pitch corrected separately, mm -hmm. you can turn the smoothing uh, down and that that makes the harmonies glue to the actual scale tones better. And one thing I learned about very early on when I was using harmony processors was if the harmonies are more in tune, even though I'm a little out of tune, for some reason my neck would just make me sing more in tune to gravitate towards the other singers because as, mm -hmm. as humans we always gravitate to other pitches. Well, until we get, until you get to be a great singer, but you'll you'll be able to improve your singing a lot better if the harmonies are a little more corrected. Uh, but yes, you're right. Pitch correction helps you um, helps the harmonies come out a little bit better too. That's the thing. With the, I always tell people at my shows that it's it's not. I say it's not cheating because if you sing slightly flat, everything's flat. 
Whereas if you sing in a band and if you're singing the harmony, if you and Chris Decker are singing the harmonies and you're in tune and I'm flat, you can kind of get away with it. But if it's, if you're doing the solo show mm -hmm. and your note is flat, everything's flat. But is there a way to tune it tune it so that the harmonies are in tune, but your lead voice is not tuned? Yeah, try the smoothing, smoothing. parameter. Okay, I didn't know that. That's really yeah. cool. Oh, when cool. you turn smoothing up, it's less pitch corrected. And you tune it down, um, it'll be... Um, well, it's not pitch corrected, but it just it just it's just like a magnetism towards the note. Hmm. So turn it down, and it will kind of tune the harmonies a bit more. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I didn't know that. That's good to know. It, it also makes it, but but the same thing. If you go ah, the harmonies will go boom, 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 boom. Um, you know, they'll do that, right? They go, but you know, you you you, hmm. you finesse it a little bit. Put it in yeah. the middle. You find the find the right setting for you. Yeah. Chris Decker says the DBX Go Rack has the most amazing 10 band anti feedback that works like a charm in gigging. Would be great to see that in the TC Helicon. But yeah, it'd be great to hold down a, a button and it just, if there's feedback, it just removes it. And actually, the Aura pedal did that. The old Aura pedal had a great version of that. You would make it right. feedback, hold it there. So if you were going to put IRs in your new pedal, that could be a good way to combat the feedback thing. Because you could, before you start playing, you could run that, take the feedback out, and then play the show. That's a nice option. Oh man, that that sounds great. And the ideal thing would be is if you didn't even have to press a button. Mm, it just hears it and takes it out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And some of that feedback on acoustic guitars, you know, when you're 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 holding the guitar and it's moving so badly you can barely even touch it because yeah. it's going. <laughs> you know. That's a good impression. You, know, you, you, you must have heard a lot of feedback. That was a good impression. <laughs> And sometimes you want that, right, for your Jimi Hendrix covers. If it's the right note, <laughs> if it's the right note, if you're singing in A flat, which is acoustic guitars, say, that's the main place they like to the feed back. Yeah, yeah. Um, and <laughs> most of the time, just like an electric guitar, you go, Boo -doo 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 -ba, and it feeds back on, ba. Yeah. it's like, no, not that note. I find C, C sharp, D. I use the notch around there. I need, and I need one more notch on the play acoustic because there's another one. There's like two places on my yeah. acoustic, depending on what gear I'm using. Um, John Lane says, that was it. Tom, I talk to the audience mainly because I only have three songs. So it must be very, very long songs or, or, lots, or, or long stories, long stories. No, that's brilliant. <laughs> and I can understand that's a way to engage your audience. I, I find times when I'm just singing and playing, it's like, how do I engage these people? And I try to do groove and they, their butts move in their chair a little bit. But I think a story is a, if you've got a good one. Yeah. Then I, then I think it's pretty good. Oh, totally. Yeah. Look, look, there's more. I love gear, but we have to remember the music is why we do it. And yeah. the interaction, the human element is obviously why we do it. But your, your products just help us have fun and do it even better. And that's why we love them. And that's why we're all so excited to see what's coming next. Um, Eric says... Well, so glad. I wish I could give you more information on what's coming next, other than just to say, check back with our socials. And uh, we've got announcements coming up. So mm. Eric says, another great guest. Thank you, Aaron. No, thank you, Eric. Thank I mean, we've had a great crowd here today. Very, very well attended. Thank you all. It's, it's nice to hear from you. Let's take one more from Chris Decker. Um, what settings do you suggest for humanize and portamento parameters on play acoustic? Oh, humanize. Um, I use the first humanize style, and I use it about... I use it about 30. Uh, portamento, that's an interesting one because portamento works fantastic until it doesn't. <laughs> mm. It's like um, you'll be singing along, you'll be adding portamento, and, it'll, and the notes will be gliding beautifully during notes. And, da -da 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 -da. and then it'll hear like a guitar, another guitar note, or a, uh, or a piano coming into your mic, and it'll go, Dong -wee! <laughs> so. Um, Portamentos probably your safest bets, like under 40, I'd say. Those are a good place to start. But please experiment and, like, turn it up to 100. Maybe have a couple of laughs. Um, turn it down to zero and hear, what does zero do? Like, oh, yeah, okay, the notes go boom, 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 boom. And 40 goes, duh, duh. There's that little bit of slide. So, yeah, I'd say about, I use about 40, yeah. Yeah, Chris. Chris is really good at um, dialing things in like that. I tend to just turn it on and and just and just go. But um, it's good. Again, it's good that you can go in there and tweak those things if you want. 
Or just use it yeah, as it is. The best product is the one that doesn't have any controls on it. I mean, your 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 tone is awesome. The way the tone just adapts, adaptive tone. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. You, you don't. I mean, there's lots of people in the Facebook group that are asking for tips and things. And I I went I went live in there a few weeks ago. We just did like a hangout. We each played a song and then gave each other feedback on what we did. It was in. Oh, great! It was in. Yeah, actually, I, I'd love to. Um, hey, let me know next time you do that. Yeah, I'd, I'll lo- I'll, I'd love to add you on Facebook and invite you next time. We should. I, I love that idea of helping each other. Again, the product is so advanced, and there's so much you can do. But what was interesting is everyone was completely different. So you know, one person, a Mark Bell, would have back and tracks, and then I used that kick drum thing, and then someone else yeah. did mainly acoustic and more of a, yeah. more of the singing with some looping at the end. And everyone was completely different and very supportive. And I, I really, that was, it was a nice thing. So yeah, I'd love to get you guys involved if we do that again. Yeah. And it's great sure. that they, they're, I, I'd love to see you guys in the in the groups too, because um, they're always talking about the products and it's very, very um, useful. Chris Decker says- I'm not, as, I'm not as active social media guy as I should be. I admit that. Well, you know, the, the, hi, my name's Tom Lang. I'm not an, I'm a, not a social media user. Well, we, we all we, <laughs> I use it. We all love your videos of the demos and everything. And but it's interesting now because a lot of companies are active on social media, and that seems oh, to be gosh. the new way. But I guess at the same time, you also want to focus on what you're doing. And how, how many people actually work at the company now? How many people are there developing these things? More than ten, less than a hundred. I don't know. Um, we, we're not as big as we used to be, so we're busy. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. So individually, very busy. So, but, but if you can join us on social media, sometimes that that would be great. And then we can hear your tailor as well, because you can play a song with your tailor and give us some. I would love to show you my tailor, and, and I, <laughs> I'd also like to show you my 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 goofy looping setup uh, with the drum machine integrated into the three button foot switch. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great to see. Uh, Chris Decker says, "Thank you. What a great guest and great interview this has been." Yeah, I agree. Well, thank you so much. And I do have to run because I've yeah, got yeah. Uh, a world to save. Yeah, a world to make safe for more harmonies. We've we've kind of overrun by fifty minutes, so I apologize for that. But I want to thank everyone for being here. I know wow. I'll let you go. I want to thank everyone for being here. I want to thank you, Tom, so much. This has been a dream for me, honestly. I've absolutely loved every second of it. No, I know you love, but I love the products. I, I'm, I'm not just saying that. I absolutely mean it sincerely. Um, Thanks everyone for joining me. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I'm almost at 5k, so get me there. Just a few more clicks, please. And I'll see you next time with more interviews, reviews, and guests. Tom, anytime we can do this again, I would love to and you know have these chats about new products. That'd be great when they're when they're ready. Could I could I could I put a a little promo in? Sure, of course. We want you to. Yeah. If you're if you're interested in any of my music or bio or pictures, TomLangMusic.com. Awesome. Yeah. Do you have a YouTube channel? I do, but I couldn't even tell you what it is. <laughs> I, I'm so hopeless. At it. Awesome. No, I was going to ask you that. And I'll put your link below in the, in the description as well. So, okay. Tom, just hang on. I want to say a quick goodbye to you off air. I'm going to hang up the, yeah. the um, live stream. Thank you, everyone, so much. We've still got 22 people. We've got more than that watching as well. You can watch this later on. So send it to your friends, and I'll post it around tomorrow as well. Thank you so okay. much, and we're all looking forward to what comes next. So. We'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Cheers, everybody. Stay safe. Stay safe. Bye-bye.